lots happening. Character day today. I wanted to show you a couple pictures here if we can. Inside out. It was the theme for counseling psychology department. This is them this morning. So come check them out. They got a couple students involved, faculty involved. Um, we tried to, tried to recreate this picture. There you go. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Uh, so today is an exciting day for this reason, but also we are going to have the privilege of worshiping together as a community, and then we have John Smale and Rebecca Duran talking today about joyfully surrendering relationships. We're excited about that. Uh, before we jump into all that, we just have a couple quick announcements, and the first one starts with a video, so direct your attention to the screens. My name is Leah Wilson, and I had the privilege of working with Connect Camps over the summer. Now, some of you may not have heard of Connect Camps, but Connect Camps is a remarkable day camp experience for completed kindergarten through completed eighth grade, with an opportunity for high school and college students to work alongside the summer staff team. Now, we are currently hiring for summer staff positions. These positions include worship leader, office director, rec director, and then normal summer staff, such as counselors and skill leaders. This summer, I had the privilege of working on the green team as a worship leader and as a skill leader with a skill that is a little bit of a secret. So if you want to know more about that, come find me. Um, it's 
but it, this experience is really a lot of fun. What we focus on is connecting kids to the local church through camp. So if that is something that interests you, we travel to eight different communities throughout the summer in Georgia, North Carolina, Louisiana, Texas, all over, all expenses paid, and you get paid to do it. So if you are interested in the summer camp experience, please let me know. We will have a table in the Student Center lobby from 10.30 to 2 this Saturday. So please come check it out. Thanks, guys. And the link on there will send you straight to the application, so if interest form application as well. All right, good morning, guys. OK, it's working. I was like, I can't hear myself. Um, hi, my name is Mary Eccles. I'm the president of the Dance Society on campus. And this Thursday, we've got a line dancing event coming up. It's going to be on LT Field at 6.30 this Thursday. It's going to be a dollar at the door. Um, and it should be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to teaching y'all Footloose and Church Clap and let loose with some, some cotton-eyed Joe. So I hope to see you there. And I just wanted to remind you guys that we have an awesome band coming next week called Corbin. Um, they're going to be leading worship next week and then also doing a concert on Tuesday. Uh, Corbin's made up of musicians and singers from Latin America, and they are partnered with a missions organization that reaches out to Latin American youth. So they are fantastic. I'm really looking forward to having them come, and you should be on the lookout for me for some uh, emails about what's happening with them. All right, and with that, we're going to hand things over to the worship team. Good morning, TFC. Um, we're so glad you're here. If you guys will go ahead and stand as we get into worship here, I'm going to read some scripture. Psalm 99 says, The Lord reigns. Let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king is mighty. He loves justice. You have established equity. In Jacob, you have done right. What is just and right? Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is, he is holy. Um, so we're here today to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Um, we're here to publicly welcome him and invite him um, and, and to sing praises to him and then confess our need for him. Um, so let's, let's sing this song um, and just invite the Lord into our hearts um, and just the be open to what he's going to do today. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of God, Spirit of the living. 
living God. We're leaning into all you are. Everything else can wait. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Come now and breathe upon our hearts. Now and have your way. Cause when you speak and when you move, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see and what we see. When you come into the room, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see. What we
Father, we thank you um, just for everything that you have done for us. I thank you that we can gather together um, and we can worship you and praise you and that you invite us um, into a relationship with you. Um, God, you are so worthy of all of our worship. We praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. Turned it on. Okay, there we go. Hi, hey. <laughs> so if you guys don't already know, my name is John. This is Becca. We're the student chaplains. Um, and so we are going to be sharing today's message. Uh, we wanted to dress up for character day, but apparently it's unprofessional, um, whatever that's about. So sorry. Um, so the theme of our message today is joyfully surrendering our relationships. Um, and so... There's a lot of different relationships that we have in our lives. I will be speaking on friendships specifically, and then Becca will be speaking on spouses, romantic relationships, things of that sort. And I just kind of wanted to start by sharing some of my experiences with friends in college. Friendships for me throughout my time at TFC have been very weird and very inconsistent. When I first got here, my first, very first day of orientation, I went to dinner and I immediately met these two guys who immediately became my best friends. Like, tight. Like, we were inseparable from that day. We did everything together. Um, we were always around each other. We had the funniest inside jokes. Like, everyone, everyone knew that we were, like, that trio. Um, and it was beyond just being this super fun group of friends, it was super deep as well. Like for that entire first semester, we weren't afraid to share the struggles that we were having in our lives, um, all the fun stuff and then all the bad stuff. We had deep Bible conversations. Just everything about these friendships was just, just great. It was awesome. It was the best introduction I could have had to college was these two guys. And I mean, all the other friends I had, but we're just talking about these two. <laughs> um, and then at the end of Winterum, after first semester ended, Winterum ended, one of them had to drop out due to financial reasons. And so it was just me and the one that was left for that whole second semester. And then at the end of that semester, he also dropped out due to not feeling a sense of direction in college, um, couldn't justify paying all that money if he was an undecided and didn't know what he wanted to do with his life. Um, both of them dropped out for completely understandable reasons. I didn't resent them at all, but it did make life tough having the two best friends you've spent this entire year of college with gone. And going into sophomore year, it was very stressful, thinking, who am I gonna spend time with? Who am I gonna rely on when I need a friend? Who's gonna be there for me? I, I didn't know going into the year. And that semester was really rough. It took me a while to even just find people to hang out with, and I did for a while, but I could tell that just in that friend group, just something, I just didn't fit, and that's okay. Sometimes that happens. The second semester of sophomore year, I actually did find another group of guys, and it was, again, really good. It wasn't perfect, like how the first group of guys was, um, but it was really good. And it was these super deep friendships. It was this group of five of us, and then over this past summer, two of them dropped out. <laughs> um, and also, one of them is now a commuter who I see, like, for 10 minutes every week. Um, so, yeah. Despite all of those struggles and all of those friends dropping out and just the struggles of sometimes not having people, God has shown me a lot about what it means to really surrender the friends that I have and the friendships that I've made to him. And so surrendering friendships to me means giving up the rights to even have friends back to God. Because God created us to be relational beings 
He created Eve for Adam to have a companion. He created all of us with the ability to form relationships with people. And so even just being able to have friends is a gift from God and should be given back to God. And so what that means practically is that we need to use our friendships to glorify God. This means that you and your friends need to pull each other closer to God in some way. Um, And if a friendship does not pull you closer to God or you don't pull them closer to God on their walk, then that friendship does not glorify God. And so I challenge you to look around at your friends and say, do we pull each other closer to God? And if the answer is no, don't necessarily give up. Make it to where you do pull each other closer to God. Um, And so what this looks like in a friendship is being able to be supportive and being godly friends towards each other. This means that you have to be supportive of them and the decisions that they want to make while also holding them accountable if they don't make the right decision or if they make a decision that is bad and does not glorify God. That is your job as their friend to hold them accountable. You need to be loving towards them, caring, guiding, just demonstrating the love of Jesus toward these friends. Don't hurt them. Um, Be loving and yet also guiding, keeping them on the right path. Loving in a way that builds them up rather than a way that just only supports them. You need to be empathetic when they need somebody to talk to. You need to be vulnerable when you need somebody to talk to. Friendships go both ways. And above all else, love them how Jesus would. The way Jesus loved was not just saying, hey man, I love you, you're doing great. It was, hey man, I love you, here's what you could do better. Me and my friends last year had this weekly accountability group where we would share our sins from that week, our struggles, the things that were hurting us, the things that we felt like we could have done better, and we supported each other. It was, it was a very vulnerable night that we had each week. Uh, it was very deep. There were often some tears shed occasionally. And we would pray for each other. We would try to build each other up with scripture and just try to be examples ourselves throughout the week of what it means to be godly men and to glorify God in our actions. And if we didn't, we would might even call each other out about it. Um, so with that, when it comes to your friends and your relationships, don't shy away from those deep talks. Embrace them and use them to grow your friendships to a deeper and deeper level while trying to keep Christ as the center of it all. James 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So pray for each other. Be vulnerable with each other. Use your friendships to glorify God. And again, if they don't, that does not mean cut them off. That means work towards a place where you can glorify God in that friendship. Another part of surrendering our friendships to God is just understanding the nature of friendships and how friendships are oftentimes meant to just be temporary. And I know that may sound like I'm speaking from experience with all I told you about people dropping out, but, I mean, think about it. The people that you're eating lunch with right now, every day, in the calf, is not who you ate lunch with in high school. And it's not who you're going to eat lunch with in the break room at your future job. And it's not who you're going to eat lunch with in the retirement home when you're 80 years old and decrepit. Um, (laughs) And that's okay. That's good. That's good. I believe that friendships are meant to be this way. Friendships are not meant to last forever. Some of them will, and that's great. But not all of them will, and that's okay. God gives us different people at different times according to what we need and in order to help us grow. Sometimes we need friends who are good examples and who are going to lead us closer to God, and sometimes he's going to give us people who we need to lead closer to God in order to once again grow us towards him. There's different people. I mean, all of us are unique, and all of us have a reason that we know each other. Um, And so with that, in each new season, it's important to continue to grow in new friendships and to cultivate new friendships and new relationships. And in a way, Jesus modeled this for us with his disciples. See, there were times where Jesus had thousands of people following him at one time, 
Think of the time where he led, or he fed the 5,000. That was all those people just following him, waiting to hear what he said. And knowing Jesus, I'm sure he knew all of them on a first name basis, but even Jesus did not have the time to directly pour into each one of those people. So Jesus chose 12 as his disciples. He chose them out of the crowds, not out of those crowds, but out of wherever he chose them. Um, And he chose them so that they could take his place and so that he could teach them. But even among those 12, he kept three even closer than that in Peter, James, and John, the disciples that he loved in a different way, the disciples that he kept close and that he took off to the side to teach more intimately and to have more deeper talks. I think in that way we should model our own friendships, having a certain amount of people, a smaller number, really close, that we tell everything to, and that we maintain really, really good, deep, intimate relationships with, that we can really tell just the deepest parts of our lives and that they can tell to us as well. And then also remain good friends with everybody around them as well. Have those people that you can just eat lunch with and have a good conversation with, but you're not going to tell all your deep struggles to. That's totally okay. But more importantly than any of that is to love everybody that you come in contact with, just as Jesus did. That doesn't mean saying, oh, I'm not friends with that person, or I don't know them, so if they come up to me, I'm not going to say anything. That means showing the love of God to every person that you come in contact with as this is one of the greatest commandments according to Jesus. As Matthew 22, 37 through 40 says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is just like it. Love your neighbor as you do yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. And so now Becca is going to share about the relationships that are supposed to be permanent. Awesome. Thanks, John. That was really good and honestly really applicable to dating and romantic relationships as well. I wanted to start by reading um, the first several verses of James chapter 4, which is where I'm going to be kind of pulling from. So this starts in verse 1. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says, he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So like John said, I'm going to be talking about um, more of the romantic relationship aspect of this. Um, So I'm going to hit on two major points. But the first point that I want to hit on is surrendering your relationship timeline. I was talking with a few girls that I live with recently, and we were kind of talking about how there's this sort of unspoken Christian relationship timeline or dating and marriage timeline. We expect to meet somebody in either high school or maybe early college, and then you're supposed to spend all of your college years with them and get to know them and have this awesome, fruitful, and godly relationship. And then as soon as you graduate, you get married and you go on missions or you go into vocational ministry or whatever it is that, you know, you're going into or any of the other fields. But, um... That's just, I mean, is it not? That's kind of like this thing. And so when you come to college and maybe you don't meet that person and then you have no one that you're dating when you graduate, then it's like, what am I supposed to do now? This is not what's happening. So, and unfortunately, that's just, that's just how it is. And we feel this pressure to find that person while we're in college, especially when you're a Christian. So my first thing is surrender your relationship timeline. 
I'm fortunate enough to have met my boyfriend in high school and we're still dating for two and a half years now. But that's not the case that it is in all of the other cases. Um, my mom was dating a guy for most of college and then at the very end of college, they broke up and she found herself in that situation where she was like, I don't even know what to do anymore. I thought this was the plan. This was the plan that I had for myself. So a couple weeks ago, I went, um, my boyfriend is at UGA in Athens and I went over there to just hang out with him and he told me, and this was literally two weeks ago, because I was going to talk about something else, but here I am. Um, he was like, Rebecca, I think that you need to surrender our timeline. Because we have a timeline, or our timeline, what we want to happen. We want to finish college and then get married as soon as college ends, you know, right after graduation, as a lot of us do. Or some people get married in college. And, but we had our timeline set. And he told me, have you, have you prayed about this timeline? And I was like, hmm, that's awkward. Not really. I mean, I've prayed about our relationship, but not really the timeline as much. And so I was super convicted. And this applies to both if you're in a relationship or if you're not in a relationship. And maybe you're looking for someone or maybe you're like, I don't even want a relationship at all right now. So my first thing that I want to pull out of James is submit to the Lord Submit. Submit your plan to God. We need to be able to be humble enough and push away our pride that we can trust that the Lord is sovereign and that he has a specific plan and that person at the right time and that we are not the ones who are supposed to be in control over that, unfortunately, because I know a lot of us just want to plan out our lives. But let's take away the big picture and just go to small picture and glorify the Lord in everything that we do and he'll make straight our paths. So submit to the Lord. Because for my mom, when she graduated and didn't have that person, she ended up meeting my dad like four years later in a church and he was the person. And there were people in her life that were there for those reasons and they were there to help her learn and grow. But the person she was gonna marry, she didn't get to meet until later. And a lot of people are in that situation too. So it's okay. Whatever situation you find yourself in, the Lord has your timeline already planned out. That's not our job to plan it out. Submit to the Lord. My second point is surrender your dating relationship to the Lord. So basically, what does a fully surrendered relationship look like? First of all, it's important to be equally yoked. As we know, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 talks about that. Um, be individually grounded in truth, in the truth of the gospel and the truth of scripture. That is so important. I know that, especially in my past in high school, I was really guilty of dating someone and being like, I can fix them, no worries, I got this. No, let's, let's not do that. Date someone who's individually grounded, especially at this phase of life. It's super important to be on the same, to have the same, the same goals that are grounded in truth. I know you may have heard of this before, but the triangle, y'all know, where God's at the top and then there's you and then there's your person at the bottom. The closer that each of you guys are growing to the Lord, also simultaneously, the closer you're getting to each other. And that's how it works. And that is so true. And I have seen that in my own story in high school. I dated way too, way too many people. It was one of my big sin struggles, guys. And I was always confused. Why is none of this isn't working out? That's why. We weren't individually seeking after the Lord, and therefore we were actually coming apart from each other and not together. Another big thing, and John talked about this, but surround yourself in a Christian community and be friends with people that are also building you up in truth. It's super important that not only are you, you know, spending time with you and your other person, but also be around people who are like-minded as you. And, um, and that way you have the same kind of, the same goals and everything. And also another big thing is to serve together. It's one thing to talk about, you know, theology and the Bible and all of that good stuff, but it's another thing to actually apply it to your life together. Work a camp together. Go to the church together. Maybe serve in, you know, tech team or the greeting team or something. Find an outlet where you can actually be in Christian service together with your partner. And that says a lot, too, to see how your partner is acting in those situations as well. And then the last one, 
and we knew this was coming, but purity. Sex destroys relationships outside of marriage. It absolutely destroys it. This world tells us that sex is something that it's not, but sex is a beautiful thing that the Lord created for a man and a woman to have in a married covenant relationship, and that is so important. And that applies to so many aspects. And so what I'm going to say about this is, is your relationship glorifying the Lord? And if you're comfortable in your sin, then you're probably not close to the Lord. Don't get comfortable in your sin. Make sure that with everything, and not just with sexual purity, but also with the conversations that you have and the activities that you participate in, that what you're doing is glorifying to the Lord because that is your spiritual worship as well. And that's super important. Um, James also talked about, I have it where I have to like go out to it. But the last verse that I read, so submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We talked about that. And then so cleanse your hands, you sinners, and pur- purify your hearts, you double-minded. And also same as what John was reading as well. Be in confession with one another, confessing your sins and praying over each other and the things that you're struggling with. But cleanse yourself of your sins because the Lord can use you in so much more powerful ways when we are confessed and ready to surrender our relationship to him. So that's the big thing. That's how we surrender our relationships is we do these things that we need to do. We're grounded in truth. We're serving together in Christian community and we're having a glorifying relationship in any aspect that that means and then surrender your timeline. Just give it to God, because it's not your job to plan out your future. So those are my two big points about that. So with that said, I hope that the things that John and I said are able to encourage you, and that you're able to ponder, of the, ponder on those things as it, comes, as it um, compares to your relationships that you have. And so I'm going to pray us out, and then y'all are dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just want to thank you for this space that we get to worship you, not only through music, God, but through the word. Um, I thank you for John and I and that you've given us just this platform to be able to speak on these things. Thank you for the gift of relationships and that we get to have these friendships and that we we get to have these dating and romantic relationships as well. Thank you for providing us people because you knew that we needed community. It's such a gift. So we want to thank you for that. God, I pray that we would be able to apply the things that we've learned today and the convictions that we have in our heart about surrendering our friendships and surrendering our timeline and surrendering our dating relationships to you, God, that we would truly do that and trust that you are a sovereign God and you know what you're doing and you know why you put the people in our lives at the time that you put them in our lives, God. And so I just pray that we'd be able to apply that I pray that every relationship that we have would glorify you and that you would convict us in the places where we need to be convicted if it doesn't glorify you. We love you so much, Heavenly Father, and we pray this in your name. Amen. Y'all are dismissed.